Why do you think Hamas invaded Israel and started the war on October 7? You don't need to guess, and even if I told you, you wouldn't believe. Therefore, we have a New York Times article from today and an interview with one of Hamas leaders, and this guy says exactly why they started the war. And if he tells the truth, I think that they practically won because they got exactly what they wanted. In this video, I'm going to go over this interview, explain why we cannot comprehend this in the West, and maybe touch upon the fundamental roots to this insanity. Hi, my name is Roy Yozovich. I have a podcast, I have a YouTube uh, channel. As you can probably tell, I'm not an American. I'm an Israeli, I have a thick Israeli accent. Nevertheless, I think that what I have to say is very important. And I ask you to forgive my accent and just hear what I have to say. Okay? So today, what we have is an article by the New York Times behind Hamas' blood gambit to create a permanent state of war. We will cover this again and again throughout the video, permanent state of war. So I just uh, marked the important segment, so I'm going to read three segments, okay? It was necessary to change the entire equation and not just have a clash. Khalil Hayaya, a member of Hamas' top leader, leadership body, told the New York Times in Doha, Qatar. So, the, I think the second most important man in Gaza told the New York Times that it's not just uh, to create a clash, it's something completely different. We succeeded in putting the Palestinian issue back on the table, and now no one in the region is experiencing calm. This was exactly what they wanted to do. No material goods. We don't want freedom. Many people say Gaza is a, the biggest open prison in the world. We didn't want any of that. All we wanted to do is that no one in the region will experience calm. Let's move on to a second quote. I hope that the state of war with Israel will become permanent on all the borders. And the Arab world will stand with us. Tahir el a Hamas media advisor, told the New York Times. Again, what do they want? They want a permanent state of war. This is not that they want peace. This is one that they want a peace agreement with Israel. It's not the case. By the way, I think that the most important thing about the Abraham Accord is for the first time, they rejected the notion that any agreement, any peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians must go, must first solve the Palestinian issue. Many people, many uh, U.S. administrations throughout the history try to first solve the Palestinian issue. We first need to solve this issue with the Palestinian and only then move on to Saudi Arabia and, and other, uh, other states. But Jared Kushner, in the first time in history, in Abraham Accord, said, no, we can skip the Palestinian issue and just do a peace agreement between the Emirates and Israel. And this is one hell of an achievement. According to Jordan Peterson, it, uh, all the people involved in the Abraham Accord should get a Nobel Prize for peace. So again, what the Palestinian said in a nutshell is somehow true, because many people in the Arab Muslim world understood that the Palestinian or the Palestinian problem is basically a gap into peace or normalization with Israel. Let's move on to the last quote from this article today by the New York Times. And I, I think that this quote will blow your mind. Hamas' goal is not to one Gaza and bring it water and electricity and electricity and such, said Mr. al Haya. Again, this is the second most important man in Hamas in Gaza. They don't want electricity, they don't want, they don't want water, and they don't want to run Gaza. Hamas, the Qassam, and the resistant woke the world up from its deep sleep and showed that this issue must remain on the table. 
The battle wasn't, wasn't because we wanted fuel or laborers, more people to walk outside Gaza Strip in Israel. We don't want, we didn't want, and we still don't want any material goods from this invasion, from this horrific war. He added, it didn't seek to improve the situation in Gaza. This battle is to completely overthrow the, th the situation. Again, this is not me. This is the number two most important man in Gaza, says to the New York Times. Why is it? We can't understand. We can't comprehend it in the West because we seek peace. We want, you know, just live in peace. Leave me. We are with the, our modern, sophisticated liberal values. What happened? You know, there, is, there are some reports that in the bags of the terrorists, many people, uh, there was found drugs, you know, to enable them to do what they did, you know, and to be more alert. But many people in the West world, the Western world, take drugs. But these drugs just make them happy, make them chill. What is it about this specific culture that when they take drugs, drugs that connect them with their inner self, it will become easier for them to slaughter the baby, to rape a woman. Why? What is it inside this insanity? And I want to offer something. Yesterday I spoke with Uriya Shavit, he's a professor of Islam studies at Tel Aviv University. And I asked him this very question. What are the roots of evil that we see in, in the Palestinians? And again, this is not Hamas leaders. Those are the civilians. You can see, you know, the picture over here. And the picture says that in all the people who got kidnapped, okay, Palestinians, those are civilians, Palestinian taking a captured Israeli civilian, okay, from Kibbutz Kfar Aza into Gaza Strip. All those peoples are not from the Hamas. They are just innocent civilian Palestinian. And the idea is that I want to convey is this. We tend to treat death as only means to an end. We don't want to, to be dead. We don't want to die. We want to live. Basically, in the West, we want to live forever. Okay? So if I'm going to kill someone, to kill myself, this is just a means to an end. But the true cause, the purpose of life, is life. Okay? This is the idea. Okay? But some aspects, some values are more important. Therefore, I might uh, risk my life in order to save my children's life, etc. But we cannot grasp the idea that maybe for a different culture, which is profoundly different than our culture, death is not a means to an end. It is the end itself. This is a higher purpose itself. Maybe in some other cultures, being a shahid, a person who just went to bomb itself and, 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 and kill as many people as possible, this is the highest achievement possible. This is very hard to grasp. This is extremely hard to grasp. But what Professor Ria told me is that all they wanted to do, you know, the Muslim brother wanted to create a Muslim state. You know, being like the, 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 the get to the Muslim, the big Muslim state again. And what they see is the gap, the enormous gap between the West and what they have that the West got better airplanes and better science and better technology, okay? And they can't fight the West. So they might say, you know, all big inventions, all big science came from the Islam. But this is nice if you, you know, for a TikTok video, it doesn't stand in reality. And when they see this gap, this dissonance, the only way out is to take death as your final goal, as your final purpose in life. And this is what we in the West cannot understand. Again, this is not me who is speaking. This is not me. This is the second most important man in Hamas, in Gaza. We don't want fuel. We don't want labor. We don't want electricity. We don't want water. All we want is a permanent state of war. And I think that if the war of October 7 taught us anything is to listen carefully to our enemies. 
okay? If Hamas says something, listen, respect what it has to say.